Software is very excited to exhibit at the ISSA and BSCAI trade show October 26th through the 29th in Chicago. At the show, we will unveil a brand new executive dashboard. The dashboard displays easy to read graphical representations of key performance indicators, such as your most profitable jobs or outstanding receivables. You can drill down on those graphs to get detailed information about your customers and accounts. The information is available to you wherever you are, whether at your desk or on a mobile device. This is an exciting new tool designed to keep you connected to the things that impact your business the most. Please visit us at booth 4413 for a personal demonstration and for a chance to win an iPad. We will give away an iPad each day of the trade show. We look forward to seeing you there. In the meantime, visit us at teensoftware.com. Hi, this is Dick again. Just a reminder that our selling webinar series begins this Wednesday, the 12th, at 10 o'clock a.m. Central Time. You can still register by going to our website at consultantsandcleaning.com. You can register there for one of them or all of them, but do join us. It'll be time well spent. Now, on to this week's CleanCast. Welcome to our CleanCast today. Thanks for joining us. I've entitled this one, Retuning Accounts. And one of the things we talk a lot about in, in the uh, clean casts that we do is how to get more sales or how to close the sale. Uh, and, and frankly, most of the calls I get from uh, BSCs uh, are ones that, can you help me increase my sales? And uh, that's where we usually start. And then we, you know, we do that. And we, at the same time, we're working on their infrastructure to make sure there's one thing to get the sales, it's another thing to have the structure so you can do it. But, you know, one of the things I always mention to people, what about the accounts you currently have? You know, normal procedure in this business is to sell an account, assign the nightly hours to it, Let's, you know, it's 10 hours a night, and you tell them that this is how many supplies you have, and we make the assumption from that that we were right. Let me ask you, have you or your sales department ever made an error in the hours that it takes to do a job? And I see a show of hands. Ah, you wouldn't admit it, would you? Okay, we've made some, we've made some mistakes. And generally speaking, on most new accounts, you go over budget to start, and then, of course, you slam the brakes on, and that's usually when the customer starts to say, boy, you started out so good. What happened? Or the old adage that we hear a lot is, you guys are all alike, and in six months, you, you, know, you start out great, and within six months, you're all the same boat. And then, of course, we have to spend our time and our companies explaining why we're, they're not, why we're different. But let me suggest to you, Debbie, that every six months you complete what I call a retuning process on all your existing accounts and uh, you can actually increase your profits and you don't need to increase your sales but uh, you cover such things I, I actually had I actually used a retuning worksheet uh, I hope you like my pink my pink color there contrasting with my red shirt but uh, I actually had a two or three page form that we used and uh, we tried to make sure that everything was in order and it goes along, this is a good thing to do along with, you know, we had a, we had a clean cast several weeks ago on, on OSHA's increased fines. This fits well with that as well. But just to go, you know, just to uh, go over some of these, we would, uh, of course you put in the name of the account and all that. but. Do we have current employment policies and procedures handbook located in the, in the closets? Do we have a supervisor's handbook if we use one? Do we have current job descriptions for all the people? 
Do we have the current cleaning specifications? Do we have the current safety data sheets? A big number, isn't it? A big item for fines. Do we have the current company and customer emergency numbers posted in the closet? And I've got all kinds of stories on that one, but not in this podcast. Do we have the current emergency procedures for injuries posted? Are all the current keys marked? Are all the keys current, excuse me, marked and secured? Have you, dis have you disposed of all the old keys? I, 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 I wasn't going to tell that story, but I got to. Years and years and years ago. Well, as we did these retuning, people would bring me the old keys that were no longer there. And I just had an old metal desk, and I just stuck them in the middle drawer. One day I'm sitting there and working, and that metal drawer came falling down on my lap. And it was that I must have had, I had hundreds of keys, in it. and I guess the weight just got too big, and I had keys all over the carpet. But anyway, that wasn't properly disposed of, was it? You know, either if they're the customer, you take them back, or you get, you know, you put them in the trash. Is your uh, equipment all neat, clean, safely working? Are cords good, switches working, backpack filters clean, paper bags empty? If you have machines in there, are the blocks in good working order? Are all chemicals properly labeled, including all spray bottles? Remember, that's another one of those big, uh, big items, big fine items. Is the supply closet neat, clean, and in proper order? And then do you have any excess equipment that can be returned? And you just put on there, I am returning. And this may, you may think, you may laugh at this and say, yeah, sure, right. But you know, we found quite a bit of equipment down through the years that, uh, particularly in the larger accounts, where you have a larger account and you may add a machine or you may add a, you know, you add a piece of equipment and you just kind of forget to bring the old one back where you could reassign it somewhere else. I know that sounds like, Dick, you weren't taking care of your equipment. And you know what? Dick wasn't taking care of equipment. When we started doing this, Dick was taking care of his equipment. And then I said all excess supplies are being returned. I made more money on returning excess. I, there were times I could go an entire month without buying supplies just from what I returned from my accounts because what we did is we gave a budget. We gave a budget of a, of a percent of the account and then gave supervisors a price list and they could order off of that up to that. And uh, then this is when we found out we didn't need all those supplies. This is when you, when you do this retuning is when you find out you don't need all necessarily the supplies that are there, you don't need necessarily all the equipment is there, and then the next item on here is what's my labor budget per night? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. What is my budget now? What is it now? Six hours a night, six hours, six hours, six hours, six, ten. I think I used ten. Ten, 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 ten. Now, then we had a line that says, effective such and such, my labor hour should be. And we would talk about then, can you reduce that to maybe nine and three quarters? Does it need to go to 10 and one quarter? We were very uh, realistic in our numbers, tried to be. And uh, there were time, every time we did a retuning, there were always a couple that we increased. There were substantially more that we decreased. Because as your employees, I'm not telling you anything new, it's just that you haven't paid, maybe paid attention to it. As your employees get more accustomed, if you have low turnover and your employees become accustomed to that 10-hour job, you might have two five-hour people in there that learn how to do it and four and three-quarter hours piece. That now is a nine-and-a-half-hour job. And let's talk about a half hour a night, five nights a week. That's about 11 hours a month. And let's say your loaded hour is $10. Uh, that's $110 a month. That's $1,320 a year. And you find yourself about 10 of those accounts. Uh, I want you to do some math. I don't have it in front of me. Just do some math. If you had 10 accounts that are five nights a week, and you could take 15 minutes a night out of those 10 accounts, 
take that times your loaded rate and tell me what the uh, and figure out what the savings would be. That's like what an hour and 15 minutes a week out of one account. And if it's a, if you got a ten dollar loaded rate, it's much more than that now. But let's just use ten dollars. And of course, that's twelve dollars and fifty cents a week. That becomes fifty-five dollars a month. Becomes sixty-six, six hundred sixty dollars a year. I just multiply that. Now, those of you that have got three hundred accounts out there, start thinking about that. Start thinking about that. Because one of the things we do poorly in this industry is go back and check budgets on accounts that we sold. We thought it would take 10 hours, it took 10 hours to start, but it's really a nine hour account. So, I want, I want to encourage you to do that. Uh, if, you, if you want to, you can go to my website, consultantsincleaning.com, and, and uh, you can uh, click on the worksheet blog, or icon on the, on the page and you can download this, it's free of charge. Uh, there will be some things on here that probably don't apply to your company, but at least it gives you the, the idea of things that you can go through to, you know, like this one particularly has a logbook. Well, you know, not many people use logbooks anymore. But the point is, it's a, it's a template that you can use. It's free of charge, go to the website, consultantsandcleaning.com, go to worksheets, and. Uh, it'll be there under operations. So anyway, let's see how many dollars you can save. You know, the interesting thing is that over the course of uh, course of this coming year, 2017, many states, many big cities, are now imposing minimum wages that are substantially higher than where they've been. You know, you've heard, of, you've seen the news where cities and, I mean, a lot of states are going to $15 an hour, and yes, they're, they're bringing it in gradually, but even at that, if they're 10 now and going to 15 over three or four years, that's a 50% increase in your labor. How are you gonna handle that? If you can maybe do some of this, you might be able to be more competitive. And you might be able to say, you know, instead of a 50%, well, I always say that the increase that you of a the increase that you give related to a minimum wage is somewhere between 75 and 80 percent of what the minimum wage went up. So, uh, if the minimum wage went up eight, you know, 50 percent, you're still going to have to give about a 35 percent increase over 37 percent over the next uh, five years. But if you can reduce this, maybe you don't have to give a 30 percent because you do want to retain your customers. And like I, like I say in my little note right here, the dollars you save may be your own. Or if you don't want to keep them, you can send them to me, and I can give you a mailing address if you want to uh, let me know. I won't object to any money that you might send. Thanks for watching us today. See you next time.